If your tank water heater is over eight years old, you may be sitting on a ticking time bomb. It could start leaking without warning, causing far more damage than the loss of the heater itself. Consider replacing it with a Navian tankless water heater. No storage tank to leak, endless hot water for spa-like comfort, longer life, and backed by Navian's strong warranty. Before time runs out, visit tanklessmadesimple.com for the name of your Navian contractor. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your driver's license is important so you can get back and forth to work, get your kids to school, and back and forth to daycare. If your license has been suspended because you can't pay your tickets, you can't do any of those things. Let's talk about Chapter 13 bankruptcy. You may have heard the tickets cannot be discharged, but they can be dealt with in a Chapter 13 case. Why not come in for a free consultation? The chapter you choose will make all the difference to your getting back legally on the road. Let's design a plan to pay off your tickets and restore your license immediately. I'm attorney Travis Gagné. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's Choose the Right chapter.com. 99.9 KISW, the rock of Seattle. A 36 year old in Oregon named Jeremy got stuck in deep snow last Sunday while doing some off roading. Apparently, there was no cell reception, so he curled up in his forerunner and went to sleep for a while. Then, when he woke up the next day, even more snow had fallen. Couldn't get his SUV unstuck. Oh, man, this is my nightmare. He tried to take a hike to the main road, but had to turn back because the snow was too deep. So his only choice was to wait in his car and hope someone found him. Him and his dog. Yeah. Five days they were stuck in the car. No food. Of course, you know, with all the snow around, he had the water. That's what you really need when you're, you know, when you're not going without anything, you you need the water. Yeah, just stay away from wherever his dog is uh, changing the color of the water. Yeah, yeah, no lemonade. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. As as, as delicious as that might seem after day four. Yeah. It doesn't taste like lemonade. All he had was three packets of Taco Bell fire sauce that he left in his car. Oh, see, he's doing it wrong. I always got something to eat in my car. You know, dude, I don't ha- I don't do that, and I should. You think I would? I probably should get some power bars or something like that and yep. just leave them in the car. I have a couple of those RX bars. Just I, yeah. I always seem, you know, sometimes I'll have them packed for my lunch. I'm like, oh, I'm not really feeling like eating this right now, so I just keep it in the glove compartment. So I have like three or four of those, and then I'm always a bag of nuts because I like honey roasted nuts <laughs> yeah. when I'm driving sometimes. Not a shocker. Or those even like the, the fire nuts. All right, well, yeah. Spicy nuts. Okay, so you got those to live off of. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Remember, this is a story about a man being stranded, not about what you like to eat in your goddamn car. I also like those. um, Okay. Never mind. Just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) I don't have any Taco Bell hot sauce packets, though. Well, again, it's probably not something he ever thought he'd have to live off of. And the the experts are saying that, really, the, the packets of hot sauce didn't save his life because you can go many days without food, and he had the water, so he was fine. They found him after five days. Somebody in a snowmobile actually when as you know was able to be in the area and find him and they called 911 he and his dog very very hungry yeah thankfully both are okay uh that, yeah the, he even wrote i love how he said something it said taco bell fire sauce saves lives yeah. if you're taco bell do you not hire this guy to do a commo- commercial definitely definitely yeah why not i mean something you, yeah you got to do i don't something. know though how do you it's it, that's a tough commercial hi i'm taylor i'm the guy who almost died but i survived on eating snow and taco bell packets yeah run for the border maybe i'll help you be a print ad you know i mean not a yeah. lot of speaking now here's the thing only because i watch game of thrones do i go they down like this taco road bell on game of thrones no they don't oh. but uh rev and vicky know what i'm talking about a man that hey you know that that very that, that that guy i forget his name i always forget his name but it's the guy who was the bastard with the dogs that ate everybody uh, you remember him? Uh, uh, what the hell? Ramsey. Yeah, Ramsey. Ramsey. Now, you remember, oh, yeah. you remember the dogs turned on him. I don't think I like the idea that I'm stuck in my car with a dog because after a while, if the dog gets hungry enough, he ain't my friend no more. This is a great example. Five days. Yeah, five days apparently not enough. A dog can live on five days, but if a dog is going like a week, two weeks, well, then Game of Thrones, sudden, I think it was 13 days. Yeah, 13 days. Those dogs turned on their master on Game of Thrones, and so I, I'm i a little worried about being in that car with that dog. Do you go for the dog first that's the problem is like eat the dog before it it eats you exactly because you know it's gonna gonna happen no i could it's it's gonna happen if i'm with lulu Lulu, she's seven pounds man if she tries to eat me it's not gonna be able she's not gonna be able to she's gonna wait till you're unconscious well she'll be unconscious too she likes to sleep more than me all right so you you feel safe i don't feel safe (laughs) yeah i feel fine yeah and steve's not gonna want to eat her she's like a tiny snack 
That'd be too weird, man. I'd rather die than eat my dog. Yeah. Yeah, see, the, the dog conversation feel, are we having? The dog doesn't feel the same way. Because, I mean, animals are animals. They will, if they get super, super hungry, they're not our buddy anymore. Oh, I, yeah. I fully expect Dan McCarl to eat my face if I, uh, if anything like that happens. That's well, what you, you animal guys don't get that. I'm not going to, uh, uh, then so be it. She's eating me before I eat her. Really? Yeah. You're giving up the body for your dog? Uh huh. See, it used to be the other way around. The dog was supposed to, first of all, why isn't that dog running out and getting help? Like Lassie. Have you seen Lulu? Come on, man. Well, maybe your dog, but this guy's dog should have went out and got help. It's stayed by its master. Yeah. And see, he's got delicious Taco Bell sauce packets to share. Well, that's true. I, I hope he shared them. Every dog. Nah, yeah, I, I know. I, I, oh, I, lick. Yeah, I, he better because, again, but see, you know, <laughs> what if the dog's like, oh, I'm glad you pulled out a condiment for me because you were going to, I mean, by yourself, I don't think you're that tasty. I always wanted fiery salsa on my human meat. No, <laughs> I've got it. Thanks, pal. Dogs don't like hot sauce. No? No, you're supposed to use hot sauce on their poop so that way they stop pooping in the backyard. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, or, sorry, you stop eating it because yeah. it, like, burns their mouth. Oh, okay. I, I know, dude, look, I've done a lot of dumb things for my dog. The day I have to hover over its poop and put hot sauce on it is the day I'm no longer a dog owner. Oh, ah. dude, it's a, a lot of folks have that issue where do- they have to do that. No, I bought the poop pills. Oh, the poop? With my old dog, Lucy. Lucy oh. had that problem when she was a, a puppy. That she found, I guess, that stuff delicious, which I think is very weird. And then we had to get the poop pills at the PetSmart or one of those places. And you f- give her the pills so that way it makes her poop taste bad. Oh, <laughs> Which yeah. seems odd that yeah. we needed to even create this, but apparently that's a thing. Yeah. Well, uh, I think I, I was watching one of those uh, oh. dog shows. And the you reason asked. why yeah. mm-hmm. they do it is because the moms, when they have their litter of puppies, want to keep that area clean. So she eats all of the stuff. And then the puppies see that behavior, and they think they're supposed to be doing that. So when they see really? their stuff, they so start mom, eating it. The moms do that to keep their area clean? Mm-hmm. Aye, aye, I mean, aye. she doesn't have a pooper scooper. Ah, this is not, no. No, nature, no. And BJ, a lot of people are texting about the Game of Thrones thing, saying those dogs were actually wild wolves. Oh, oh yeah. All right. All right. Spoken like a true dog hater, BJ. The dogs in Game of Thrones were trained to kill already, not nice domesticated dogs, LOL. But they never turned on their master, that's the point. You people, you, so these see, these textures don't want to face the truth. Animals are animals. If they if they get hungry enough, they'll eat you. If they, they if they left to their own de- left to their own devices, they have to. They're just animals. What do you want them to do? Well, Lulu likes vegetables. I think she would go straight for like some kind of tree or something like that <laughs> before me. You guys, you know, she you does. Guys, she likes carrots uh, and peas. Uh, all right, I, I can't talk to you, pet owners, because you just really Good. don't understand that they're animals, and you forget that. Nope, they're all humans. <laughs> One person says, my ex and I had this exact conversation. He said he already talked to the dog, and they could survive longer off of me than um, we could survive off the dog. There are reasons. So if you had two people, it was you, dog, woman. You, dog, woman. Wife. Yes, Tarzan, yes. What okay. would you like me to do? Who are you going to eat first, the I'm dog eating, or your no, wife? I'm not eating anybody. I'm, 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 I, I just, I just, I can't. Wow. I don't even, I'm, I'm, I mean, you can last longer with the wife. Yeah. There's probably more meat. Yeah, I think, no, I think I think I just would go. I'd be oh, done. okay. Yeah, I, I just can't see myself eating would a person. Would you offer yourself up as the buffet to them? Well, I, I look, at this point, if I'm, if obviously I'm going to be passed out and done. I'll be dead, right? Yeah. If I'm not going to eat anything, I'll be dead. Then after I'm dead, do whatever you want. I mean, you know, when I'm alive, it'd be like, it'd be nice if you don't when I'm alive. I mean, it's just like, because I'll have to sit through that. Yeah, let, me, let the body be done first. Yeah. Then whatever you, and then have at it. I don't care. It's very odd. It's very odd conversation. Very morbid. Uh, let's turn it to this then, because you know what? We're all getting older. This, of course, uh, this closer to where I'm at in life. Uh, if you saw SNL this weekend, it was a really funny fake commercial. It was for a toilet seat for the elderly to spare them the embarrassment of being found dead on the toilet. He passed away. Oh, no. That's awful. I'll say. They found him on the toilet. It's so embarrassing. Dying on the toilet. It's every senior's worst nightmare. You live a life of grace and honor only to pass in the most humiliating way imaginable. Ass up on a bathroom floor. (laughs) Thankfully, there's a solution that's both elegant and dignified. The toilet death ejector. When you're on the toilet and you feel yourself dying, simply press the red button. 
beneath the seat will propel your dead body forward, hurl you gently through the air, and deposit you neatly on your bed. The toilet will then automatically flush and release a puff of lavender scent. <laughs> that sure seems awfully complicated. I'll tell you what's complicated. Explaining to the grandkids that Nana died while taking a giant dump. No matter what the cause of death is, they're going to assume it was the size of the dump that killed her. So reclaim your dignity. <gasps> team of engineers guarantees that the toilet death ejector is mostly accurate. Yes, he passed away. Oh, no. It's a shame, but at least he died peacefully in bed. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Only thing was, his pants were around his ankles, and there was <laughs> everywhere. The toilet death ejector. <laughs> Every time you hear that sound, an angel gets its wings. Yeah, that's a pretty funny commercial. And I was thinking, like, oh, yeah. Uh, that is a fear sometimes. Whenever you have like one of those rough goes, that's why I breathe. Yeah, I'm like, oh man, I don't want my wife. That that shouldn't be the way. That she, the last time she sees me. Yeah. Early when I was dating my wife, uh, I ended up actually accidentally passing out on the toilet. What? At the PLP's house. Oh man. Yeah, yeah. They just heard this big thump. And I, uh, yeah, and she didn't come and try to save me. No, the best friend did. So that was kind of nice. They had to, f- to pick you up off the floor. So you really- no, no, it wasn't that bad. But they did have to knock a couple of times, and then then I came to. Yeah, and for me, it's I like the Duke naked. So uh, really, no. that would be really. You take off all your clothes. You really do that. Sometimes keep my shirt on, but for the most part, everything else is off. I Maybe mean- so. Imagine my wife walking in. And it's like just me naked with my socks on, and that's it. I don't understand that. I don't understand what? why you take your plant yeah. off. I was going to say, animals poo naked all the time. It's our and look how happy being. they are. Do you, you do the same thing? You keep your pants around your ankles? Yes. Yeah. Why wouldn't I? That way it's a nice, like, just let your legs free. I mean, if I'm home, yeah, like, no pants. Why would I wear you pants? Mean, you mean, wait, well. Like, what? I go to the bathroom, I know what's going to happen. You take so you, the, the so jammies you, off. So you take everything off. Yeah. Yeah. You both are weird. Oh. No, maybe you're weird and you just don't know it. I anybody bet, else? I bet anybody, other texters are, are fans anybody of this else too. in this room? You take their coat, their pants no. off, and they go to the bathroom. I'm just imagining Steve, like, like he's just like sitting there, pure freedom, kicking his legs in the air, like just doesn't have any care at all. I feel so free. You, I'll be fair. Sometimes I leave the bra on. Don't you, Steve? Yes, yes, I keep yeah. the bra on, of yeah. course. I don't want that in my eye when I'm like aggressive. No. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, you you, you don't want to get hit. <laughs> that could happen. Well, apparently, it's not that weird to poop naked, according to some articles I'm reading. Oh, well, you know, stop going to the internet and trying to find another, another clothing person. Clothing can, can restrict blood flow. Oh, here we go. That's tip number one. Number two, <laughs> you're, you're supposed to poop like nature intended. Oh, yeah. I'm, 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 please. What? These, this is an article by Alternative Daily. It's a very respected. I can't, you know what? Then I, for that same argument, I should, be able to, I should be able to go outside. If you're going to try to tell me that I should do like nature, then I should be able to go, go outside, outside in public and no one should get upset about it because that's what we're supposed to do. It's a natural thing to poop in public outside. No, do it outside your house on your fake grass and merge around and see how that yeah. goes. Okay. It says when you poop naked, it's freeing and less stressful. Why I would it feel be stressful to poop with your clothes on? I don't know. <laughs> okay, well, at least it's an honest answer. All right, let, me, let me find out. Uh, you want me to read the reason? Being naked is a very freeing experience in the comfort of your own space. Feeling free means feeling less stressed. According to one doctor, ongoing stress makes it difficult for many people to go to the bathroom properly. Your brain and gut have a very close relationship. They, they communicate how you're feeling back and forth to each other. In fact, irritable bowel, sy- bowel syndrome is closely correlated with high levels of stress. Oh, wait. So that means I should go to the bathroom naked. Yes. All it, right. I got to do it now. It well, says it also helps you avoid hemorrhoids. Oh, As a man in his 40s, never experienced it. I, well, I wonder why hemorrhoids would be happening with your clothes on. Like, <laughs> what does that got to do? I know that. <laughs> I know when you stay on the toilet too long, maybe hemorrhoids could happen. But I don't know what the clothes have to do with it. Yeah, I'm not sure either. And the blood flow. I mean, I, I, I mean, you know, what kind of tight clothes are you wearing in the first place? One person's best part of pooping naked is you can sit on the toilet backwards and use the tank as a table. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Now, I'm pants getting in the way of that, BJ. Oh, I see what they're saying. Yeah, yep. you can straddle the thing. Yeah. So much as I've had this conversation often with my wife, I, too, am a naked pooper. <laughs> okay. Well, all right. I guess there are play- there, there's something for everybody. <laughs> Vicky's got a picture of the guy who's <laughs> pooping. Like, the, like, almost like you're straddling a chair. Yeah. And you use the top part as a table for his beer. A book, a beer, and his phone. This guy's living the life, man. No, I... No. And he's got a sweatband on his head. I don't need this. No, I don't. <laughs> you two just have fun pooping naked. So it's my husband and I, we use the poop stool. Is that the squatty potty? Yeah. 
I have yet no no one will get me one. I asked one for Christmas many years, many years in a row. No one gets me one. Why don't we all, well, let's all chip in and yeah, get BJ's like body body? I know. I mean, they, they tell so me that, you can get them two for the price of one. I'll take the other one. Okay, nice. I got no problem with that. I've asked for it for Christmas. They tell me don't get anything, don't get anything. Like, all right, and I put it on the list every year. And neither none of my kids, my wife won't get it. You just but, have to treat yourself. Treat um, yourself. I just, you know what? I, 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 I you know what? I'm, I'm on protest. If I what? die in the toilet, it's because they never got me the squatty potty. They'll they'll feel badly about you it. You are depriving yourself from the best bathroom experience. Well, then you get me one. Well, you should come over and try it out. <laughs> All right. What if I go? I get I, real excited. I make everyone try it. Great if he shows up and you're not here at the house and he's got to talk to your dad. It's like, hey, Juan, I'm here. Well, Vicky's not here. Why are you here, BJ? Oh, she told me I could use her squatty potty. Yeah, she told me to come and, use your toilet. Be like, all right, go for it. And I've really worked time. out a good. I, I really worked it up. I'm ready to. I'm ready to really drop a great deposit. <laughs> try pooping naked. Yeah. On a squatty potty. Someone says a squatty potty is a game changer. Okay. One person, my mother-in-law, walked in on me pooping. I'm a naked pooper. It was awkward. <laughs> Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't Some know. people say they go they get naked beforehand because they go right into the shower afterwards. Mm. Well, that I understand. That's a nice one two punch. That makes sense. If you're going to take a shower, I, got, I, I mean, that makes sense to me. I've done that before. But what if you just got home from work and I know I'm going to put on my pajamas because I don't hang around my house in my jeans, which I think is weird. You guys think it's normal. Ugh. So I might as well get all my clothes off before I put it on and take care of business. Yeah, if that, again, if it's a transitional period, sure, but you're not, you're doing it every time. Yeah. Yeah, so, so, so the, 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 I, I mean. Well, pajamas are just one item of clothing. It just whoop, It feels off. like, see, here's why. It feels like a pain in the ass to me to, I, I, literally, you know, having to take my clothes on and off more than I'm supposed to. Like, I only want to take my clothes off. Are you afraid you're going to throw your back out or something? It's it's just no. It's just like well, I don't. I, it's like a pain in the ass. I always keep putting my pants on. So he says, "Have you guys tried poopery? It's magic." Uh, oh yeah, my wife got it for me as a stocking stuffer for Christmas, and it's fantastic. It seems to be a little high maintenance. I've, I've what seen are you talking people, about people have tried it and then realized, ah, oh, the spray is just easier. Isn't that what poopery is? The spray. No, not, it, no you spray in the you toilet. You spray first. in the toilet. Yeah. And you got to do it yeah. every time. You got to spray the toilet. And make that does, film. The problem with uh, like the it's actual no different than if you pooped and you'd spray afterwards. Well, when you flush the toilet, you've got to then respray again and make no, sure don't. the film no, covers. You don't. Yeah, you Who do. Who told you that? Because it creates a film. Of course, you got to spray you again. Cre- you put the film right before you poop. You don't need to do it like after you're done and it just the water. Well, bad. either way, someone's got to spray after each flush. No. I've you never, I've it, never yeah. had That's to why do it. it doesn't, doesn't work right. Poopery creates a film over the water. Right, prior to using it. Yes. And then when you flush the toilet, that film in the water is flushed down the toilet. And you Right. And, and then the, the next time I got to go poop, I yeah. do it again. So, That's what I'm saying. No, this says Wait. after flushing, a pleasant aroma is spread through the bathroom. Yes. So when you spray it before you poo and you flush it, that's the only time you need to spray it, according to them. I think we're saying the same thing. The, the no, bottom. you spray the one time. You spray beforehand, you poop, flush, you're done. Yeah, until the next time you go back to the bathroom and you have to go poop again. And you spray it again when you do yeah. it. That's what I'm saying. No, you were just saying that you... Okay, am I not... No, yeah, you no. guys are mishearing. He's yeah. saying that exact thing. Yeah, you guys are mishearing. He just doesn't saying, want to do it every single time. Yeah, I don't want to have to, every time I go to the bathroom, go and do that film thing. It seems but if you pooped and you want to spray it in the air like an, a Lysol, you're going to have to do that every time. Yeah, but that's a quick... And I'm out. Yeah, this but... See, and you're on. poopery, you don't smell the poo. With the Lysol type stuff, you smell yeah, the no, flowers I, and the poo. I get you, but I just Ugh. remember I remember that when I, in order to do it right, poopery says do this, this, and this, and it's just a little bit more work than just doing a... And it's, since, it's pretty much the same amount of work. It's just you yeah. do it in the beginning as opposed to the end. So you guys both use it? Yeah. yeah. Religiously? yeah. Well, at first I was using it the wrong way. I was just spraying it in the air. Oh, yeah, that's And then my wife's like, are you an idiot? Read the instructions. I'm like, yeah. who so reads you, instructions? So, so, you guys, so you guys are sold on poopery? Because oh, I've, yeah. I've noticed, and not so much me, but I've noticed other people, that's been their complaint, and they've stopped using it and just get the spray again. Mm. And, and I asked them why, and that was the reason they gave me. They said it's a little bit more high maintenance than the regular it's spray. It's too extra. Not even like, it's like an extra spray. Why am I arguing yeah. for them? I should let you argue with them, actually, because right. I They're never wrong. use it in, the, in my house in the first place. People. You're dumb. Why am I dumb? No, I'm no, they're not dumb. dumb. They're dumb. Oh, they're dumb. Okay. Hey, I mean, you, oh. you guys really? So far, you My like, buddy, wrestler, uh, Brian Cook from the Cook Bros, he said Squatty Potty. Brian Cook approved. I'm not arguing about the Squatty Potty. I want one, and no one will give me one. Vicky, Buy well, one. Good God, man. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This is the dumbest conversation I've ever you heard in my Amazon. entire life. <laughs> That's saying oh, a lot. Oh, my God. We've had a lot of stupid conversations this morning. Well, the truth is, is I don't want to buy one. 
Why not? Just go to Bed Bath and Beyond. No, you don't. Twenty bucks. Oh it's, Jesus! It's, it's, it's like the. Oh, you're like, for where they're going to judge you? Yes. Oh, now that oh you've asked, gosh. here's something you know you probably didn't know, but everyone poops. Why are you worried about? It? It's not like you're buying look, adult diapers. You're the ones that look. Everybody condoms. has everybody has their thing, and yeah, to me, it's like buying condoms oh, and adult Amazon, diapers. Amazon, they'll and deliver tampons. discreetly to your door. Imagine if they sold the squatty potty at the place in South Center that he hates to go because he doesn't. Feel oh, the Jolly Boo or Jolly Bee? Jolly, Jolly Bee. <laughs> they probably have great squatty potties there. I'll never go. It's right next door. It's a Jolly Poo. <laughs> yeah. See, I won't go because I'm afraid I'll be judged. Just get it, man. Dude, get it for me and I'll have it. Why do I have to get things Can for you? Can I have 25 you? bucks or borrow, excuse me, 25 bucks? And I'll get it for I'm you. I'm not worth 25 bucks to you, Vicky, after all I've done for your miserable life. Just order it online and then have it mailed to your house. Does Amazon really deliver that? Amazon's yes, got that's everything. that's where I bought mine. Oh, all right. Well, what, that's a lot easier. What doesn't Amazon have? That you're right. It's a good point. I just thought it was a Bed Bath & Beyond exclusive. That's why I was telling my people where to get it. And then it's, it's, it's just a blank white canvas that you can kind of create whatever you want, man. So you can match like your walls and stuff. Oh, thanks, buddy. Yeah, yeah. I saved extra wallpaper from our bathroom. I'm going to wallpaper my squatty potty. They also have black sick. ones now. That looks sick. I want it. A black one? Yeah. All right. Or pink one. Purple, Yes. Oh, if they got a pink one, I think my wife will finally be on board. Mm. It makes Not sense. Really. I mean, at some point, they had. I feel like they had to have them, you know, color-coded. <laughs> All right, well, Vicky, order me one up. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I've got to talk about this man that faked his own kidnapping. Why? All because of a Super Bowl bet. I'm going to tell you all about this at 817 on The Rock. BJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. There's a 60-year-old dude in New York who faked his own kidnapping last week. And why? He was avoiding paying his Super Bowl Squares debt. You know, again, if you're a friend of this genius, this is what this is what you deserve. Well, these squares, I mean, they usually are pretty cheap, and you say friend, but apparently he did this online, so he did this for people he didn't know. Oh, this is not a lot of people. Well, then these people are even dumber. Yeah, I don't really understand why. I mean, maybe some of them knew him, but I don't understand why you would get involved in this. Yeah, it's a super square. You know the squares. I mean, you should yeah. do it at somebody's Five, house. Five, ten bucks a pop for a yeah. square. Well, his was online, like Steve said, cost 500 bucks per square. There are 100 boxes, so that means, yeah, 50 grand was in the pot. And, of course, he was running a scam. This whole thing was a scam. There's a shocker. And uh, most of the names in the pool were fake. He was trying to take all the money that people were sending in. But the real people in the pool actually won. Oh, so he set it up so that the majority of the squares were not were him. Exactly. Thinking, well, the odds are in my favor. Mm-hmm. Oh, this guy's so stupid. But, again, sometimes odds don't reward you, baby. And, yeah, the real people won. He owed them 50 grand. Well, someone called 911 last Wednesday after finding him in his truck with his hands and legs bound. And he claimed the two guys with a gun stole all the money. But police quickly figured out that, no, he staged the whole thing. Here's a state trooper on why they saw through his story. You have a man that's been abducted for two days at gunpoint, a large amount of money taken from him. He doesn't seem to be emotionally distraught, maybe upset about this. You know, it's almost like business as usual. You get a guy that's been in a pickup truck for two days, he looks relatively clean, and then you dive into his story a little bit deeper, and what you realize is all this stuff is made up. We see. We talked last. You gotta week. ham it up. If you're gonna do it, you yeah. gotta fully commit. You gotta punch. You gotta. You gotta go full Jesse Smollett. You gotta have a couple people beat you up. Yeah, get some bruises going. But even he got caught. So yeah, that's the problem. The cops are always a good catch college you. effort. You gotta give him credit. Yeah, I. I he just, tried. You know, it's not like he bleached TV. himself. Yeah, <laughs> it's it just. It's you're not gonna trick the cops. You're no. just not. You know, and this idiot showed that. He's facing fraud charges. Of course, here's the story. You're not getting your money back. No, he probably spent it. Yeah, it's gone. Wow. Again, you know, if you've got $500 to blow on Super Bowl squares, then you shouldn't be upset. I'd be pissed, though. If you drop 500 and you're watching the game and it ends up being that you won, what an exciting moment. Yeah. I hope you weren't. I hope you didn't need that five hundred. Is all I'm saying. I know you'd be pissed. I get it. I would be too. But I hope you didn't need that five hundred. True. Yeah. Because if you did, then you know what? 
you deserve to be tied up and locked in a van. Hey, we got a text from someone says, I don't know if you guys know, but the lead singer of The Prodigy passed away. Can I get a shout out to The Prodigy? Rest in peace from Ryan the Iceman. Got a few texts about that. Keith Flint, uh, the front man of The Prodigy, Damn. died. I think it was 49 years old. That is too young. Yeah. Do we know, uh, we don't know much about They said about it wasn't some, it wasn't suspicious, which, I mean, it wasn't like anyone, like, that something happened to him, but I don't know if it was a... Still substances 49. or whatever was in his system. I don't know. See, I worry. I, I worry about it because, yeah. look, obviously in the world of music, when you die uh, under the age of 50, I mean, in this day and age, that really shouldn't happen. I no. Mean, it, it can, but it really shouldn't happen unless unless there's some hard living going on. 49, though. Yeah. yeah. I, they would add, uh, the, of course, Firestarter was the big hit. And then Smack My Bitch Up. That was the one that had oh, yeah. Yeah. that music video yeah. where mm-hmm. MTV won't show it until midnight back in the days of MTV. Be playing oh, videos. Oh yeah, because it was just so. Yep, it was just so over the top. Damn, dude, forty nine years old. Yeah, yeah. They had the band put up a, a post on there. Deepest shock and sad as we can confirm the death of our brother and best friend Keith Flint, a true pioneer, innovator, and legend. He will be forever missed. Thank you for respecting the privacy of all concerned at this time. And they're about to play some big music festival. I think next week or something yeah. like that. It's, I, I mean, I don't know. It just, it's... uh had that crazy hair, like the two devil horns. Yeah. Is. Take my picture. <laughs> my picture. Yes, I feel like I'm there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they were going to consider to be like the next Nirvana. Remember, I don't know if you remember that, but at the time... You remember it better than me because yeah. I was, I mean, I, I wasn't into the, pro, into the Prodigy. I heard of them, but I, I don't know them like Oh, I do. bought their, land, uh, their uh, CDs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fat Atlanta and uh, Music for the Jilted Generation were the two ones that I picked up. Yeah, and it was right around that time where they thought, okay, this new electronica mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. going to be the new grunge and the you know the 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 nirvana of their of their style of their genre is going to be the prodigy and and it seemed like all signs were pointing towards that but I don't think ever the electronic type style really connected the same way that you know guitars and drums did at the time yeah but and plus the angst of a generation you could feel it in the music of mm-hmm. of the Seattle sound it, it, it was the perfect storm it's always tough when you go here's the next thing it's like well you know there's so many levels and layers as to why the Seattle sound worked. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know you can you can get very very reflective of it as the years have gone by. Yep. It makes sense, like you said, elect- electronic music just doesn't reach you. You know, to it's you know the the generation was needing some cathartic therapeutic something, which is what the Seattle Sound did. And I think too many people were making it to be like this is the next big thing. Yeah, when that whole Seattle Sound wasn't expected to be the next big thing, it just kind of happened. Yeah. Whereas so when all of a sudden you're being told this is the next Nirvana. It was like, no, it's not. This sounds nothing like Nirvana. It doesn't do the same thing for me as Nirvana did. But I know people that absolutely love the Prodigy. I remember they played, like, when I worked at the end, they did one of those end fests, and it was just, like, bonkers for those guys. And, and they did, like, the Electronic Pavilion and things along those lines. It was, like, them and, like, the Crystal Method were the, the big electronic artists that were kind of crossing over to the alternative world. It makes you wonder what, how that Im- impacted the band and him with that kind of expectation. Yeah, I wonder. Yeah. I mean, you never know. And you can't deliver on that because it's, you, as you, I mean, you, 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 I love it when experts go, this is the next big thing, like you said, and it's like, no, forget it. You just put a, you put a nail in that coffin. Right. Because, I mean, you just can't, you, you just can't strike lightning that way. It's not how something amazing works. Well, I just remember being like, okay, this is the next big thing. Let's hear it. And then you hear it and you're just like, this is nothing. Like, this yeah, is nothing. Thing what I it's never my style. I mean, I thought they were they were interesting and cool, but I was never. I'm not going to be one of those people that's like going to lie and say, "Oh, now I'm you know I I, I paid a, so much attention to their music." Like the Rev, the Rev, I can tell. Like he, yeah, he, he actually named two of their records. <laughs> that's impressive. I think most people who can. Yeah, I mean, it was really one of those things, and I was into it just because it was different, it was unusual, and I've always liked like Depeche Mode and stuff like that. Huh. And so this was just kind of a harder version of that electronic music. That I liked from the eighties. Do you guys? Does Vicky and Danny know Firestarter? Because I, I think of it as just being like this, you know, up and coming artist in a sense. But like, it's so far removed from now. It's like we're talking like late nineties, no, wow. probably early two thousands. That makes sense because they, they, yeah, they're, 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 they know it. Mm, oh, uh, Firestarter, I don't know, but I do know Smack My Bitch Up. Oh, right. If you could find Firestarter, 
It'd be kind of interesting. Oh, are we to talking hear. five years after Nirvana came on the scene? How, how long did it take for them to go, okay, here's the next big thing? I don't even know. I mean, if you're saying 2000s, I mean, geez. it had to be. You know, actually, it probably was mid to late 90s. So it was a, a few years after Nirvana. Oh, see, well, you can never make that prediction in five years. Go, here's the next big thing. That's not how. That's not how it works. Yeah, like, here's a here's a, here's a fire starter. Remember that? No, nope. no. no. I just, don't remember it either. That's I, completely out of my. I wow, no that was their that big song. hit. Funny because I I loved the smack video my bitch was awesome. up so yeah. much. I did a. Uh, downloaded on LimeWire back in the day. See, you're the problem. I the thing the is, problem. this is this is a band that would definitely reach my new wave love. Because it has it has a little punk new new wave yeah. in, in it a little bit. It was I like a brace of EDM. Yeah. Uh-huh. Absolutely, yeah. 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 That's a good way Man, to put I it. I gotta go dig up my old CDs now. This is what happened. It's a yeah, sad reason, say. but I mean, this is really good music I've totally forgotten about. It has but a I, very uh, industrial vibe. Yeah. Yeah. The thing is, yeah. it's. I mean, I don't mean to be mean, I, I, really, I don't know. I don't really mean to be mean, and I'm using this word. Maybe it's not the right word. Okay, but it's 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 disposable. Whereas the Seattle sound is not. It, it, it there was something in what you know Nirvana and those guys were doing. It just reached you on a level that a pop a poppy song or whatever right. can't reach you. Well, I think the music. Uh, it was more the attitude and the performance and the look of the prodigy that they felt was going to be this thing that was a game changer. But when you when, when you when you Boil it down to just the actual song. I'm the fire starter. Yeah. Wee, 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 wee. Whatever else he says, it's not going to connect with people lyrically that maybe like a Nirvana or a Pearl Jam song did. So and see, you've eliminated that part of them being important to somebody. Yeah. And I would kind of, uh, it'd be more like uh, along the lines of these are more like the Sex Pistols of the late '90s, early 2000s than uh, a Nirvana, sure. so to speak. Like it's way more punk, way more in your face. Uh, you know, giving the fu to. Uh, uh, the authorities, stuff like that. Interesting. Okay, because I definitely think the Seattle Sound was giving FU to authority. I'm sorry, says Gene Simmons covered Firestarter for a solo album that he released some years ago. Oh, it's really? the only single off of that album, and it did not do well. Oh, please find it. Gene Simmons of Kiss covered that. <laughs> You can hear it, Steve, if you pay seventy five oh, ninety nine. I can't pay, Gene. I'm sorry. I can't pay. Go for to that. kissonline.com. So he says, I heard that song uh, in Triple X. Oh, uh, no, I found it. Another person says, you I heard it? Firestarter off of the Tomb Raider soundtrack. All right. Oh! Okay. Maybe you know what? I bet that's where I heard that song. Probably, then. yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Do you really want to hear Gene Simmons' Firestarter? It's got to be done. 100% uh, yes. Awful. It's like William Shatner covering it. Yeah, it is. Yeah, Gene. Oh my gosh, the video is so bad. It's. Yeah. I mean, look, there's a lot of interest, a lot of hot chicks to look at in this video. That's what he does. But it, it is so low budget and so stupid. What is he doing? He's 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 trying to be cool. This is like when your dad shows up wearing like the cool kid clothes. He's kind of dressed like, like Kid doing? Rock. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, okay. Yuck. Yeah, Gene. Well, I'm shocked that that didn't do well for him. No. Yeah, right? Put the makeup back on. I, I just, I'm sorry. That's, well, I mean, if you, it's out there if you want to see Gene Simmons in a pimp coat and a goblet. You so, got it. So he says, out. Prodigy were ginormous in the mid to late 90s in Europe. I was lucky enough to be in the Army. They were as big as Bass Nectar here in the U.S., but the shows were like a Metallica show. I didn't get to see them um, here at the Mercer Arena, but I guess the whole floor was jumping. I can understand that. It feels it has a Euro vibe to me. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. And that's why a lot of people thought it was going to translate because they were, gig- he's right, they were ginormous. I remember people being like, this is the next big thing because of how popular they were over there. And yeah. it didn't translate. It, it, it had success, but it didn't translate to the same level as it did overseas. Yeah, it's an, it, you know, it's an interesting thing about the Seattle sound. Because when you take a look at pop music, you talk about the next big thing, Steve. And this is the problem. Pop music itself is not memorable. 
Mm-hmm. It really, really isn't. Whereas the Seattle sound, which is which, when you take a look at a lot of great rock, rock is memorable because there's a message, there's a vibe, there's a feeling. It just so happens that somehow that Seattle sound exploded and became a nationwide thing. But there was substance to it. Where most pop music is disposable, especially the further away you get from when it was released. When you think of pop songs, what stays in the? But this the, wasn't considered pop. This wasn't considered a pop song. It, 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 but it feels more poppy to me than than the think about it at the time. It was pretty abrasive. Yeah, and, and, and like someone even brought up, it, it introduced EDM to a lot of people. At that time, you weren't hearing stuff like the the Prodigy. It was it was not pop whatsoever. It yeah, became I can popular, that. but it definitely wasn't pop. It'd be more closer to metal because that's kind of yep. what industrial is. It's just techno metal. Yeah, I, I, I see what you're saying, but it feels like there's some. I, I think a, it just feels a little poppier than regular metal to me, eh. because of the beat, maybe because of the. Uh, you yeah, know, because, I hear nothing poppy about it. You don't hear anything dancey. Is dancey? Maybe I'm thinking. Well, yeah, because they're appealing to an EDM crowd, which yeah. is electronic dance yeah. music. But that's, it's that's not yeah. pop. Yeah, maybe maybe I'm using the wrong word. I think when it's dancey like that, I just don't think it has a lot of substance to it to me. Mm. The, uh, you know, whereas whereas I look at the Seattle sound and there's substance. There's 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 a message. There's a feeling. There's emotion, as opposed to just wanting to dance. Uh, Somebody says I saw them at Enfest back in 1996. They just released Firestarter that summer, and they played that uh, as a headline of last minute since uh, the end thought they were going to be the next big thing. It was pretty exciting and flashy from Brian and Lake Stevens. Yeah, the end paid a lot of money. I remember that back then. It was a big risk, and I don't know if it necessarily fully paid off, but at the time, they spent a lot of money because they believed that they were going to be the, the the station and the market to break them into America. It was like, okay, well, they're huge over in Europe. Let's bring them here, and we'll pay a buttload of money to bring them here. Not a bad idea. It's just, a, like you said, on fa- I wonder what the return was. Because, I mean, obviously, they oh, had huge yeah. success. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the financial return was. But, I mean, yeah. at, at the time, I think they thought, okay, we're going to be viewed as the station or the, you know, the yeah, the station that breaks this band. And I think that was a worthwhile chance to take, mm-hmm. you know, a, a, because if they ended up being more, you know, like you said, uh, if, well, even popular, even if it was a big mm-hmm. thing, but just not on the level or at least in the, the gravitas that the Seattle Sound was, it still could have been a big popular oh, yeah. thing. That would have been cool to see. I heard it was a great show. Yeah. All right. Well, we've... Uh, We've got Steve over here. We were on Friday, unfortunately, for Steve. He got this one wrong. Who played Ike Turner in the 1993 Tina Turner biopic? What's love got to do with it? That guy. Oh, man. Don Cheadle. No. Uh, Ben Affleck. No. No. (laughs) Morgan Freeman. No. No idea. I couldn't even remember this guy. This is the guy that had a conversation with my wife at a bookstore for crying out loud. Lawrence Fishburne. Lawrence Fishburne. I, I, I just. Morpheus himself. I didn't know. You want a shot at beating Steve? You got it. 206-421-ROCK. We're playing Beat Migs at 847 on The Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. Here's a question from a listener. Uh, My house is currently in foreclosure. I've stopped making payments. What can I do to save my house? If you're already in foreclosure behind on your mortgage, you can stop the foreclosure by filing a bankruptcy. There's different types of bankruptcy. Chapter 13 can help you catch up on your house payments if you're behind. It would mean that you'd have to start making your house payments again and catch up on the amount that you're behind over five years. You could also take off or strip off your second mortgage, which would help you to reduce your housing payment every month, especially once you're done with the plan and done catching up on your first mortgage. We could also try to buy you some time in the more in the in by filing a Chapter 13 case. Filing a Chapter 13 would definitely stop your foreclosure. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. And thanks for listening. I'm Erin Ryan, political commentator, comedy writer, and host of Crooked Media's Hysteria. And I'm co-host Alyssa Mastromonaco, former White House Deputy Chief of Staff for President Obama. Each week on Hysteria, we are joined by a team of hilariously opinionated ladies to discuss the headlines from the serious to the absurd. We cover everything from reproductive rights to rom-coms and break down the political news of the week and cultural stories that affect women's lives. New episodes of Hysteria drop every Thursday. Listen on Odyssey, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.